Hi all! So it's time for another installment of dealing with the roots of the occult. And today we got a fun one. We are going to deal with the occultic roots of evolution. Yes, I said evolution. It is not a fact. It is definitely not science fact. It is science fiction at best. And that is the reason why it is still the theory of evolution. And I know some of you are all shocked and appalled. But it's time you heard the hard truth. Because like I've said multiple times before, you need to test every spirit. Everything that everybody tells you needs to be validated, it needs to be observable, it needs to be repeatable, and it needs to be quantifiable. That's science. Because if you can't do that, then we do have a problem. Um, that ends up getting into belief. And this is one of the things that I'll tell you very clearly. Evolution, for the most part, is a cult. It's both occult and occult, okay? Uh, in other words, it wants you to believe things without questioning. And anybody who raises a concern and says, well, wait, something doesn't make sense here. They will shut you down. They will call you every name in the book. But you see, the truth can stand to be questioned. A lie cannot tolerate any questions. So today we're going to expose several lies of evolution. And one of the things, if, you, if you're all flustered already and you're already, your blood's boiling, calm down, sit, listen, and learn, and be free. So one of the things you have to take into account right when we start with evolution, we have two forms of science. You have observable or operational science, and then you have origins science. Now there is a big problem because operational and observable science, well, the awesome part with that is that is true science because it is testable, repeatable, you propose a hypothesis, and at the same time, you do an experiment. But if I do that experiment, and you do that experiment, and somebody else does that experiment, we need to be able to all come to the exact same conclusion before we can say that it's science fact. If three of us get completely different views, well then, we have no way to be able to go any further. That is observable, operational, science. That's true science. And the awesome part about true science, true science will always line up with the Bible. 100% every time, no exceptions. Origin science, you see, one big issue with that is there's a lot of things that become muddied water. It becomes opinion-based. It becomes... Um, unvalidated and unverifiable, and things that you have to take by faith. Well, if you have to take things by faith, well then, that becomes religion. And if you're not allowed to question something, well then that's a cult. And that's where I want you to understand that evolution falls into the category of being an occult. So, let's take, for example, the first aspect. The lie of evolution tells you, oh, it's millions and billions and billions of years. Except for the fact that every time they do something, oh, well, we have to adjust it by a couple hundred million years. Oh, sorry, we were off by 20 million years. You know, a plus or minus factor of 20 million years is a pretty big flub factor, okay? In mechanics and in um, like engineering, I mean, I have personal friends that build things with a tolerance of five decimal places. Like, do you realize how tight those tolerances are? So, you can do things with precision if you're not trying to cover up a lie. And you see, one of the things if we actually look at when we're dealing with ages, many people will be like, oh yeah, but they carbon-14 dated it. Whoop de doo carbon-14 dating is probably one of the most worthless garbage dating systems you could ever possibly have. And I would challenge you to actually research it. And one of the things that you'll actually find, the way most people do carbon-14 dating, is very simply like this. Well, how old's that rock? Well, I don't know, we found a dinosaur in it, so it has to be millions of years old. Okay, well then that rock is millions of years old. 
And then they'll do tests. And you see, carbon-14 dating, what most of you don't actually realize, it will give you a huge variance in numbers. It'll give you from a couple of hundred years to a couple of hundred million years, all in the same repeated data. Well, again, if we go back to what I said, repeatable and observable. If you do a test and every single time you're getting a different response, the sad part is with carbon-14 dating is they cherry pick and they chose, oh wow, look, this little window on our chart that's this big is the information that we're going to use because it fits our presuppositions. That's not science. Consensus is not science, okay? So, one thing I also want you to understand. If you look at the formula used to calculate the ages, we have a big problem. Because in that formula, you have two variables. And quick quiz, those of you who did math and science and your physics classes, can you solve an equation with two variables? Nope, you've got a problem. So one of our variables is time. Our other variable is what was the original amount that those different radioisotopes began at? You don't know. You don't know if there was a variation over the course of time, some environmental factor that came into play. And you see, that's where you get into uniformitarianism. And uniformitarianism is garbage science, okay? Things don't just keep going the way they are, okay? It does not take into account uh, variations in nature. I mean, we see storms all the time. Totally changes the landscape of an area. You cannot simply assume that things always went at the exact same rate. Ages, they lie. Carbon-14, they lie. Evolution is a lie. Going on. A lot of times you were told fossils. Well, fossils, something died and then it laid there and then gradually it got accumulated with dust and more layers of dust and then it gradually compressed it and it turned it into stone. Lies. Have you ever had something, your, one of your pets die in your backyard? large property. We've had dogs run away and then we found them several months later as we were walking through the forest and all you see is fur and bones. But I've also killed other predators that were on our property, um, you know, coyotes and, and foxes and different things like that that were attacking chickens and um, I just left them for dead. Well, they didn't last more than a couple of days before other predators came and ate everything there. There wasn't really anything left to fossilize. Two years ago, I was actually in Gaspé, and one of the things that I had actually seen there was a huge whale that had washed up on the beach, a dead whale. Well, again there, a whale will become food for everything else. It's never going to become a fossil. Fossilization requires rapid burial, and rapid burial confirms Noah's flood. So you see, we end up with, when you have one lie, you need to tell another lie to cover up that first lie. And when you start questioning things, the truth easily exposes all of the lies. So fossils require rapid burial. There's no negotiations on that. It cannot be something that is done gradually over time. And by the way, there are multiple accounts of humans with dinosaurs in the exact same layers. If you go to the Avis Delt track out near Glen Rose, Texas, I've had the privilege of going there myself, and uh, there are fossilized footsteps where if you take them through the electron microscope, it is impossible that in those stone that the human footprint, which was there first, where it had the dinosaur footprint that actually pushed through into the mud and it did become stone afterwards, okay? You cannot separate it. You cannot recreate it any other way. Also, at the actually phosphate beds in North Carolina, one of the things that you would also see there is there were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of human and animal, dinosaur, etc., bones, all mixed into a big slurry together. 
Now, another problem we also have with fossils is they'll tell you that, oh, well, the layers were down, laid down consecutively, and they tell you that for geology. But again, there, geology has a problem. Because if you look at the rock layers, there's a whole bunch of rock layers that are bent and go around. Well, I don't know about you, but the last time I tried to bend a rock, it didn't go well, okay? That means those layers had to be fluid. They had to be liquid in order to be able to bend in those different structures, okay? Again, confirming Noah's flood. Now, let's get to the fact that everybody tries to say the lie that we evolved from monkeys. I'm so happy to tell you, we did not, okay? We did not, we did not come from monkeys. But one question I wonder if you've ever taken time to ask is, well, what did monkeys evolve from? And I'll wait, because if you actually go and you try to find that information, by the way, I used to be a high school science teacher. Um, if you go and try and dig for that information, you'll see that there's a huge gap for what was before a monkey, and then a monkey just shows up, but magically we evolved from a monkey. Yeah, not likely. Okay, so I wanna help you have some clarity on some different things. Let me ask you some questions. In your science classes, you were never necessarily instructed the sequences of evolution. Let me take you for example. What did we get first? Did we get a mouth before we got a butt? Because that would be really inconvenient. You could eat, but you couldn't poop. So you'd kind of explode after a little while. I know, gross, but trying to give you a good visual. Well, did you get muscles before you got a nervous system? Well, that's kind of pointless because what are the muscles gonna control unless you actually happen to have a skeletal system? And then, well, why did you need a skeletal system? Well, you, you see, you have all these extra questions and the mechanisms that they propose for evolution, well, it just came up with it itself. Okay, well, let's look at our eyes. Our eyes are the most advanced picture capturing technology on this planet. It doesn't matter how much money you throw at it. You cannot design a camera or anything that can see and focus at all different levels like our eyes can because they are created by God, okay? So, and at the same time, for evolution, if nothing had ever seen before, how did it know that there was something to see and how did it know that there was colors to be able to see? That's a problem. Okay, something that you need to understand. Now, at the same time, one of the things that I want you to also be able to understand is, um, you know, when it comes to the evolutionary uh, stages, like they say, oh, well, this developed and then it had to be uh, transferred on. You know, it was seen as a good modification. Okay, well, again, we have another problem. Sexual reproduction. You got a man. And uh, there's no woman to procreate and go on with because only the man evolved his uh, sexual organs. Well, we kind of have a problem because you died before the, the transfers became, uh, you know, it had a possibility to transfer on. Do you see the problem here? Do you see why I'm telling you to ask questions? Okay. At the same time, I want you to take the time to ask the question. Well, what in our bodies could we do without? Like if you say, okay, eliminate this part or eliminate that part, can you do without anything? No, you can't. Evolution has lied to you. The school systems, the scientists, the doctors, everybody who purports evolution is lying to you, okay? Because they want you to feel insignificant. They want you to feel like dirt. They want you to feel so that you are nothing and that there's no point to life. That is the whole point behind evolution. And what most people don't realize is that is the spirit of the Antichrist. And that is the root of the occult. Because it's trying to steal your joy, to steal your purpose in life. It is trying to steal your identity because we are created in the image of a loving God. And one of the things that's important for each and every one of you to realize is that we must submit ourselves to God. We can't do anything without it, without Him. And I'll even prove it to you. Give me one second. 
My apologies, I just had to go and grab my Bible. I forgot to have it here in front of me because there's something important that I want you to be able to see and understand. So one of the things that I, I want you to, to take stock of and to understand, when we talk about our DNA, and a lot of times people will lie to you and say, well, we're just like a monkey. <laughs> How foolish a statement that actually is. So let me do some actual concrete science with you to open your eyes and to remove the lies and the blinders that you've been taught. So first off, did you know that we share virtually 57% of our DNA with a banana? I don't know. If I'm almost 60% the same as this, there's a, I don't see any resemblance, but there's 60% the same. See, so we need to take stock of information and we need to process it properly. Now, what most of you don't realize, do you know that we share 70% of our DNA with trees? Now, I'm pretty strong and I'm fairly tall, but I am not an oak tree. I will not have the strength of an oak tree. I won't live as long as an oak tree. Okay. So just because you share DNA with something doesn't necessarily mean you came from that, okay? Now, most people will try to convince you that we share 98.5% of our DNA with monkeys. Well, you're lacking some information. And at the same time, most people don't realize, hmm, funny, how come they selected monkeys? Because they want you to go in a particular way. But they forget to mention that we also share 98% of our DNA with pigs. I don't look like a pig, you know? So one of the things that you have to understand is people will pick and choose information in order to deceive you and lead you a particular way. Now, one of the things that I want you to be able to understand, okay, when they did those studies in order to determine the percentage of DNA between us and other mammals, for monkeys, when they say we're 98.5% the same, that was 1% of the human genome that they based that calculation on, okay? Well, that's only 1% of our entirety of DNA. We only match a monkey in 1%, it works out to it's 98.5% similar. The interesting thing is, is what those science books so conveniently forget to tell you is if you keep going and you go beyond that 90, that 1% of genome, by the time you get to 5% of the genome being sequenced, that means there's 150 million DNA individual pairs that are different. That's a lot of variation. We're only at 5%. So, we did not involve from monkeys. Anybody who's lied to you about that, be mad at them. Don't be mad at me. I'm the one that's telling you the truth. And you know what? I'm sorry that you are only hearing it now, but it's important that you do. One of the most important aspects about DNA that I want you to see, and if you don't hear anything else in everything that I've said up to this point, please hear this. In our DNA, we have four key amino acids. And in those four key amino acids, you have adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine, okay? Those four amino acids occur in pairs that do 10 sequence, five sequence, six sequence, and five sequence. Well, the amazing thing is, is when you actually break it down, science has actually proved that each of those bonds forms one across, and two, it also happens to be the letters in Aramaic that spells the name of God, Yahweh. And most people will ignore the fact that scripture itself even declares that far before science figured it out. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 17, it says, He existed before anything. 
and he holds all creation together. Right at our core, right in our DNA, Jesus himself holds us together. Don't allow the lie of evolution to separate you from the love of Jesus Christ. Evolution is not compatible with the Bible. It is not compatible with Scripture. Even theistic evolution is pure garbage, and it nullifies the truth of God's Word. So throw it out. Remember one thing that I like to say, nice expression, if in doubt, throw it out. Well, evolution is plagued with doubt. So, man up, or woman up, and throw it out. And one thing I also want you to see, once you let go of the lies of evolution, a whole bunch of other lies fall apart. Like the lie of racism. That one will fall apart too. Because you see, they've already proved scientifically that there are three common ancestors to every single person on the planet. And those three common ancestors happen to be Noah's three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And every current people group on the planet is from one of those three. And the amazing thing is, is if you go back in any grave and you validate the oldest person that you could ever do a DNA test on to the person who's just first born, their DNA will not differ by more than 0.2%. And that includes our skin color, our eye color, our hair color, our facial shape, whether you're male or female. And there is only male and female. Anybody who tells you otherwise is lying to you. Okay? One thing you have to understand, I am sharing, with you, sharing you truth so that you can be free. So if you've been duped by the lie of evolution, if you've been taught it that you could not question it, sadly, you allowed yourself to be part of a cult. You took things by faith instead of actually questioning it and testing it. And when you put evolution to the test of science, it falls apart. When you put evolution to the test of God's word, the lies are very easily exposed. So, if you want to be free today, pray the following with me. Dear Jesus, I made a mistake. I believe things that my teachers, my science teachers, my nurses and doctors, my parents, my family, my friends taught me without questioning. I chose to believe the lie and it separated me from my identity in you. Forgive me, restore me. I believe in you, Jesus Christ, today. If this has helped you, please leave a comment below. If you'd like some resources to help you go even further, I would encourage you, one, DM me, it would be my pleasure to, uh, to provide those for you. But at the same time, please start following ministries like Answers in Genesis and Creation.com, who go far more in depth to explain everything than I did in this short video. But at least today, we dealt with the roots of the occult in relation to evolution, and we exposed the lie, and we revealed truth. Have a great day. Bye for now.